Alright, this is part two of our tutorial. In this case, we're going to be using the PEP8 simulator to load to enter in assembly language and assembly language program to then convert it into machine language and then to run it. It's very similar, a couple extra steps, but uh, very similar to what we did with the machine language program. So the first thing we're going to do is what I mentioned before is go up and go ahead and put this in three view so that we have, and I left click here, so that we have the source code area the architecture area showing the registers as well as the memory dump. So unlike with machine code, object code, we're going to be entering our source code in the source code window here. So previously we entered the machine language code down here in object code. So now what we're going to do is we're going to enter it in the source code area. An example that we're going to work with is the example from page 171 in the book. There's a, an assembly language program there. And so I'm going to enter that program in this upper window. So br main, it does, send t does seem to be a, a bit sensitive to case, so go ahead and try to maintain the case. If it's a large uppercase br, put an uppercase br, things like that. That means branch, obviously. So I'm going to continue to enter this program into the source code window, and I'll be right back. All right, as you can see, I've entered the example from page 171 into the source code window here. So you can scroll down and see the whole program. And uh, anyway, I won't talk about the different language instructions or assembler directives that are here. But you can see that we're allocating some memory here, and then we have our actual assembly language instructions down here. All right, so now, with assembly language programs, we have to convert it into machine language before the computer can actually run it. And so, to, and so in order to do that, again, I always stress going up to System, Clear Memory. So the first thing we want to do is go to Build. And we need to assemble this program. Okay, we need to assemble the program. So left click on assemble. And notice what's happened now. So now we have our source code here in assembly language. Now we have the object code, the machine language, that actually corresponds to this source code up here. And um, so we've now assembled it, converted it from assembly language into machine code. And so now, just like we would do with a regular machine language program, an object code program. We want to load that program. Notice initially we have nothing in memory. So now we want to load this program, just like before with the machine language code that we did before. Load it. And notice now the contents here have been copied into memory, just as we saw in the first tutorial. And so now it's exactly the same kind of thing that happened last time. In this case we want to have some inputs. So this is a good example of some inputs. This program has some uh, DECI, decimal input values. So let's just throw in a couple values here just to give the program something to work with. And notice that I did not put any commas or anything between them. So um, what the program will do is it will grab values from this window here, the input window, as it needs them. And so now I've loaded it. I've put values for batch I.O. inputs here. So now, again, just like before, I'm going to go to start debugging object and I'm going to single step through it. And just like before, what we're going to see is that the, uh, the program is the program counter is pointing at the next instruction to be fetched. So those three bytes are in blue. The operand and instruction specifier are shown here in these registers here. And the other thing that I didn't point out previously is that here's the accumulator register, the A register, which is where we're storing our results. And so what we want to do is notice that the um, is that some of these programs we're going to want to pay attention to if it's doing addition, subtraction, or whatever, that um, what's going on in the accumulator is where that's going to be happening. And so notice that the accumulator is showing the value here in hex of what's in there, the contents. And then to the right is the decimal value associated with the accumulator. Anyway, so we can just keep single stepping and um, until we hit the stop. And then we hit the stop instruction, and uh, the program completes with an output of 60. And so in this case, what did it do? It must have added uh, 10 plus 20 is 30, plus 30 is 60, and didn't use that last input value. But basically, the idea here was just to demonstrate how this particular program actually, how the simulator works with assembly language code. 